this is the day. Name the place, darling. Where are you going? Come and spend your autumn years in an Indian palace. Arches and canopy balconies. It's a luxury development where all the residents are in their golden years. Like the Costa Brava. Yeah, but with more elephants. Good evening, Catherine Well here on a chilly night in London's Mayfair. And you're joining me as I'm going to be checking into the world premiere of the best exotic and marigold hotel. Your first time in India? Yes. This country seems rather more civilised than one originally thought. Yeah. Congratulations on the film. Thank you. I laughed, I cried, I think I went through all the emotions. Did you sing? I didn't know, I didn't <laughs> sing. I stopped that. Um, but I must admit, it was really refreshing to see such a mature and older cast, which I don't know, I feel today are kind of underrepresented in the film industry. I think they are. They're a neglected constituency in film, as I'm afraid to some extent in life. Um, uh, but they're, you know, they're avid cinema goers in my experience. Um, and, you know, I think it's really interesting to see that perspective. And I, I relish the opportunity to tell a story, um, you know, from that point of view. Uh, because all of these people, though it's a comedy, it's not just a comedy, but it is a comedy, uh, I suppose, primarily. Um, it's rooted in all of the depredations that you know, um, beset you in old age. Loneliness and pain and isolation and bereavement and loss and financial insecurity and infirmity. And uh, these are real things and real emotions. And if the film sort of shows you kind of a way out of that, uh, I mean, not a totally realistic way out of it, it's kind of an adult fairy tale of sorts, but, but it has some interesting uh, and quite complex things to say, I think, about growing old and you know the destination and I don't mean India that ultimately awaits us all and the hotel itself is quite a character isn't it I mean it is. did it used to be a dilapidated palace I read somewhere uh, it was that it was originally uh, you know it was built as a tribal chieftain's palace it's actually about an hour and a half out of Udaipur in the desert in the summer and uh, it's actually quite lush pasture in the winter it's uh, more recently being used as what is called an equestrian hotel, uh, i.e. people who want to go riding would stay there. But it's a, it's a marvelously eccentric building um, who, whose geography and architecture are very hard to comprehend from a Western standpoint, um, but sensational for the film. Um, and has, although you know it is dilapidated and very down at heel, um, and obviously not what it's pretending to be uh, in the brochure that Dev Patel's character sends out into the world. It's also got a magic about it. Uh, it's some, there's something, uh, genuinely it does, the building does too. Would you like some of this? I believe it's called alu carparata. Now, if I can't pronounce it, I don't want to eat it. How best would you describe your character? Because he's sort of on the lookout for love, isn't he? He's a bit randy. He's... Uh, he's somebody who uh, knows that he's a bit of a loser, but he's got a wonderful kind of energy inside and he actually enjoys life. And he knows he should do something a bit more adventurous before he dies. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I loved him. I, he's, I, he's somebody you just like and he's rather silly, but he also has a great, he has a lot of compassion and just delight in other people. He enjoys life in a rather hopeless, silly, but wonderful way. Welcome to the best exotic Marigold Hotel. There's an Indian in there. So your character doesn't really adapt to life in India, does she? No, she has a horrible time. She thinks she's going to have a nice time but it just doesn't suit her. The trouble with, um, I mean, in this film, uh, the traveling, they think it's going to solve all the problems, but they forget that you take yourself with you. And if things aren't going well anyhow, you, it's, going to, it's going to make the problem doubly difficult because she's in a rather difficult marriage or a marriage that's run out of steam. So that's going to, and then you're thrown together. So it's quite difficult, but um, you know, that's, that's my character. Other people take to it very well. And in real life, I loved it. <laughs> this building is in 100% shape-shape condition. Oh, 
I thought I might fix it myself. Give us a refund. Of course. I'll refund you completely. You will? I most definitely will straight away in three months, okay? Your character is very optimistic, you know, very happy. Was it exhausting? Oh, it's so exhausting. I I drank an ungodly amount of just Gatorade and electrolytes for the role. I wouldn't suggest it for anyone. It was, he's just so hyperactive. I wish I had a tranquilizer in some of the scenes, but John would just push me. He would egg me on to go higher and higher. Um, it was great fun though. And how is it working with such an amazing cast? Was it daunting or were you excited or both? Um, everything, everything. I've never felt such a mix of emotions. Like the first week before I got cast, I was terrified. Then I got on set and realized that they're all just so super cool. They're all rock stars, you know? And um, it was just so much fun from then on, you know? And everyone's just got a, a dangerous sense of humor. They're all so cheeky, so it's, it was really good. Are you all right? I just want a glass of water. That was a gin and tonic. I know that now. I have a dream, Mummy G. To create a home for the elderly so wonderful that they will simply refuse to die. This man is dead. I'm in hell. How was it filming in India? Both of you. Amazing. Amazing and shocking and exciting and thrilling and like nothing else ever. Because it's, I'd never been before, neither had he. And it's, um, what a country, I mean. But it's yeah. a real culture shock. And nobody got ill, nobody got the famous deli oh, belly yes. thing. Yeah, everybody did. Everybody yeah, got you know, ill. You kind of take that for granted, but uh, not, you know, not, not awful. It wasn't awful. Just a day or two and you'd be better. And obviously one of the main themes about the film is retirement. Is this something that, that scares you or are you quite comfortable with it? Or Well, I'm an actor so I don't really need to retire. I can go on until I just get bored or drop down dead. I think for a lot of people, retirement is a real um, scary prospect. You know, what happens now when, I don't make, when I'm not making all this money? Who's going to look after me? Is anybody going to look after me? Can I look after myself? All these big questions that we're only too familiar with at the moment. Yes, it's a big problem. My name's Norman. You're very fit. Beg your pardon? Oh, God. Look at us. A group of self-deluding old fossils traipsing around as if we're on some bloody gap year. High five. No, sorry, I don't know why I did that. I've never done it before in my life. You look gorgeous. Thank you. You sound surprised. No, I'm oh, sorry, no. I put on everything. Everything I could find, I put on. Because it's India. Sparkles and colour. How was India when you were there? Had you ever been before? I had, 20 years before, and this time it had far much more traffic, sadly, but uh, it's still gorgeous. And obviously working with members of a cast you've worked with before must have been absolutely fantastic, a big get-together. Yeah, yeah, and we had a good laugh, and people I hadn't worked with before, um, but it was marvellous, uh, you know, just a fantastic experience, almost like a dream. If somebody told me I dreamt it all, I'd believe them. It was that good. And obviously one of the main themes about the film is retirement, but obviously as an actor, you know, retirement possibly isn't something you worry about, but obviously it's a great theme for, you know, audience members to have a film about, particularly the older generation who seem to be kind of forgotten. Would you agree with that in the film industry? Well, I mean, I, I think it's rather a good idea to go to India because I don't think we've got it quite right here, have we? But I'm not going to retire. <laughs> It seems like they're a lot more respectful in India to older people. And in China and in India uh, uh, and in Italy, I believe. But we've got it all wrong here. Um, I find it rather hideous, I'm afraid, the way children behave towards their parents. But there we are. Perhaps I'm old fashioned. How can you bear this country? What do you see that I don't? The light, colours, smiles. All life is here. Had you ever been to India before? No, never. I'd never been. How did you find it? Did you get used to the traffic and the noise and the colours? I was hooked within a, an hour or two, really. I cannot wait to get back and take the family. And obviously working with some cast members who you previously worked with before and director, it must have been fantastic. Yes, I know, a lot of friends together. Like a theatre company, you know, that we all, um, we were just all together all the time. Very rare. And if you ever do retire, being an actor, they don't, they don't normally retire, would you ever like to re retire abroad to somewhere like the Marigold Hotel? Well, I don't like the word retire, so I'm not going to do any. I'll go and visit, hopefully, abroad. Um, but if I don't act, I'll do something else, I expect. Do you think we'll be all right? It's going to be extraordinary. I have to ask you, yeah. at the end of the film, there's a scene of you on a motorbike with yeah. Judy Dench in the back. Yeah. 
How I know. Was that? Well, it Grief. Was, I know, it was scary. I woke up every morning thinking, don't kill Judy Dench. I had lessons. I've never driven a motorcycle before. And also she had to sit side saddle on the back in the Indian way. So it's kind of very dodgy. And we had to go through the streets of Jaipur. I did 16 takes and I didn't kill her, which is pretty good. <laughs> Are you a big fan of... Well, they, um, they kindly used... Free uh, tickets? No, well, they, I didn't... Uh, well, I don't know. They, um, they kindly used uh, Starlight in, uh, in the trailer uh, for the film. And then I got the invite and I came along. I thought it's uh, it's been a nice night out. Absolutely, and it's a star-studded cast. Are you big fans of Judy Dench's Bill Nye? I mean, how can you not be a fan of Dame Judy Dench? I mean, she's a bit of a legend, right? One of the main themes about the film, I don't know if you know, is retirement. When are you planning on retiring? Oh, God, a long time from now. I mean, if, if I even was thinking about that now, I'd have some serious problems. You know? Does it scare you? <clears throat> no, I just need to work really, really hard. You know, I, I have been working really hard. Um, you know, <clears throat> we've got the tour coming up in March, and that's uh, that's pretty intense. So um, I'm going to do everything I can to, you know, to stand my ground and be in the industry as long as I can. Everything will be all right in the end. So if it is not all right, it is not yet the end. So there you have it then. The stars have gone inside in the warmth of the cinema, which is where we're going to be going as well. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been Catherine for Premier Scene. You're not worried about the danger of having sex at your age. If she dies, she dies. <laughs>